Hi everyone, it is Tara here from the Way Assemblies and Schools team. It is January 2021. What a start to our year being in lockdown. So here I am in my home. Some of you are in school and others of you are in your homes. And I just wanted to let you know that the Way Assemblies team are praying for you and your parents and your teachers. We are praying that you know that God is with you and that he loves you. Now you can see behind me, there is a lighted candle and I've lit that candle to remind us that God is here with me and he is here with you. And no matter what is happening around us, God is with us and he loves us. In fact, God's love is wonderful. It is a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. Wow, <laughs> God's love is awesome. And today I'm going to talk about God's love in the way that he forgives. God's love and forgiveness helps us to change, to behave differently to what we are, we've been doing. God's love and forgiveness helps us to turn over a new leaf. This is an interesting saying, turning over a new leaf. When I think of the word leaf, I think of a leaf from a tree or a plant. I have a very sad plant in my house at the moment and it's losing all its leaves. I don't think I've watered it enough or perhaps well, I might have watered it too much. Oh dear, I am not very good at looking after house plants. But do you know I don't think turning over a new leaf is about a plant or a tree leaf, but about a page in a book. Did you know that another word for a page in a book is called a leaf? A leaf in a book. Turning over a new leaf. Every morning I try to wake up early and spend a bit of time with God before my day gets really busy. Sometimes I just sit quietly and I share my thoughts and feelings with God. Sometimes I, I read the Bible uh, just to learn more about him. Sometimes I listen trying to hear what God wants to say to me. But most mornings I open up my diary and I start a new page in it. I may look back and what happened yesterday and the day before to say thank you to God and perhaps also to, to share some of my worries and things that have upset me during the day yesterday. But then I turn over so that I can see a new page. That's right, Tara, because did you know that's where the saying comes from? Turning over a new leaf, turning over a new page in a book, starting again on a clean, fresh page. A clean, a clean new, fresh new page, a new beginning, the start of something else. I wonder how you feel about a clean, fresh new page in your writing books or your maths books or your science books. I suppose you're probably doing quite a lot of work at the moment on your computer screen. And so it might mean a clean page on your laptop or your iPad or whatever device that you're using. And some of you might say that that's a bit scary and it worries you because you don't know what to write or what to draw on the page. And that might worry you. But for some of you, you might say, phew, well, my last piece of work was a bit messy and I had lots of mistakes on it. 
this time I'm going to try and do things differently. Or you might look at your targets and think, I'm going to try and work on my targets more. And turning over a new leaf in a book, well, it may be a bit of a challenge which brings worries, but it also might bring excitement because it means change and a new start. We're into a new year as well. And often in a new year, people make New Year's resolutions, trying to make a new start and trying to improve themselves in some way. Now, some for some, that might be exercising more or eating more healthily. For others, it might be learning a new skill or a new hobby, like playing a musical instrument. Tell you what, I have a quick game for you. I'm going to show you some pictures and you simply need to guess what the new hobby that's associated with those pictures. But to make it slightly harder, the pictures are taken from very close up or from a slightly strange angle. How do you think you'll do? Shall we find out? Let's have a look at our first one. What do you think this could possibly be? What do you think this, this is a picture from? Have you got a good guess? Well, I'll show you. It's a piano and that might be learning a new instrument. So what a great hobby that would be. Let's have a look at the next one. What do you think this could be? I wonder what do you, what is it? What is this thing? Shall we have a look? Well, it's a bike and riding a bike or exercising more, walking more, going for runs or even maybe going to a gym. Let's have a look at the next one, shall we? What do you think this could be? Or oh, do you recognise it? Shall we have a look? Well, it's a needle from sewing or doing cross stitch or maybe you might somebody might want to do knitting or some other sort of um, activity like that. Shall we have a look at the next one? What do you think this could possibly be? What might you have seen this on before? Shall we have a look? Well, it's from an oven. And that might mean that you cook more or you bake more or you make sure that you eat healthy things. Shall we have a look at the next one? What do you think this could be? Well, this is a rake. And that might be people who like gardening or they want to get out more, grow more vegetables and fruit or just simply make the place look prettier. Different ways in which people try and turn over a new leaf, make a new start, and maybe even try to somehow be a better person. When we are forgiven, it's like turning the page over of a book and starting a clean play page in our relationship with the person or with God who has forgiven us. When we are forgiven, we have the opportunity to change, to think and behave in new and fresh ways. I think that is why it's so important to think really carefully about why we're saying sorry, because this is all part of turning over to start again with the way that we think and behave. There is a wonderful story in the Bible that shows how Jesus' love and forgiveness helps a man to turn over a new leaf and change in an amazing way. Have a listen to this. Jesus is coming, someone shouted. Jesus is coming to Jericho. Now Jesus was a famous and popular guy. He told amazing stories. He told everyone about God's love and he had helped loads of people, healing them. And he had even brought a couple of people back to life. And so to have Jesus come into your town, well, that was really special. Jesus will be in Jericho this afternoon, someone else shouted. And so everyone ran out to see him. Well, I say everyone, nearly everyone, for there was one man. One wee little man who did not run out to see Jesus. And his name was Zacchaeus. Now it wasn't that Zacchaeus didn't want to go and see Jesus. He did. He really, really did. But Zacchaeus wasn't exactly a very popular guy in Jericho. In fact, he was probably the most hated guy in town. Why? Well, because he was a tax collector, that's why. And not only did Zacchaeus collect the taxes for the hated Romans, 
he often took more than he actually needed and kept the rest for himself. Jesus is here! Someone shouted. Jesus is here in Jericho! And everyone cheered as Jesus walked through the main street through town. Well, I say everyone. Nearly everyone. For there was one man, one wee little man, who did not cheer. Because although Zacchaeus really did want to go and see Jesus, he did. He really, really did. He was also afraid of what the crowds would do to him if they saw him. But then Zacchaeus had an idea. Because, you see, Zacchaeus was a wee short little guy, and maybe, just maybe, he could climb a tree and hide in the leaves and the branches, and then see Jesus as he walked by. And so Zacchaeus ran through the empty back streets of town, and whilst the crowd's backs were turned, he quickly climbed up the leafiest of the trees and he hid. Come to my house, Jesus, someone called out. Come to my house for dinner. And because it was an important honour to have Jesus to come and eat at your house, everyone called out, inviting Jesus for dinner. Well, I say everyone, nearly everyone. For there was one man, one wee little man, who did not call out. Because although Zacchaeus would have loved Jesus to come to his house, he would, he really, really would. Zacchaeus knew that Jesus would never have chosen to eat at the house of a mean cheat like him. But then, as Jesus was walking past Zacchaeus' tree, he stopped and looked up into the branches and between the leaves and he said, Hey Zacchaeus, what are you doing up there? Come on down, I'm coming to your house for dinner this evening. Jesus wants to eat at Zacchaeus' house, said someone in surprise. Doesn't he know what Zacchaeus is like? That's ridiculous! said someone else angrily. Zacchaeus is the most hated man in town. And everyone muttered and spluttered in disgust. Well, I say everyone, nearly everyone. For there was one man, one wee little man, who scrambled down his tree as fast as he could and ran home happily to prepare the biggest and the bestest banquet ever ready for his special and important guest. And as Jesus and Zacchaeus ate and talked together, the crowds hung around outside, desperately trying to hear what they were saying. But as hard as they tried to listen, they couldn't hear a thing. That was, until suddenly Zacchaeus flung his door open with a bang. Hello everyone, said Zacchaeus, with a huge smile plastered across his face. I've been talking to my new friend, and I have an important announcement to make. I'm really sorry to all of you. I've not been a very nice person, and I've cheated many of you out of your money. And so, to show you how sorry I am, I promise that if I have cheated you, I will pay back four times what I have cheated you out of. And then I'm going to sell half of what I've got and give it to the poor. The crowd stood and looked in amazement. Jesus had done something amazing with Zacchaeus. Don't you see? said Jesus with a smile. God loves you, every one of you, no matter how good or bad you are. And now Zacchaeus loves God too. Then someone cheered, Hooray for Jesus and hooray for Zacchaeus, as the rest of the crowd joined in. And one man, one wee little man, cheered too, as he hugged his brand new friend. I wonder how Zacchaeus, how he felt, when Jesus showed him love and forgiveness. I've always wondered what Jesus said to Zacchaeus that stirred his heart to say sorry and to change. He changed from stealing people's money to generously giving it all back and turning over a new leaf. I wonder if you can think of a time when you were forgiven, how did you feel? Did you try to change, to think and behave differently? You know, forgiveness helps us to start again, to turn over a new leaf. And it's just wonderful that each new morning, when we pull back the curtains, it's like a fresh new clean page in our lives to start again following God's example of love and forgiveness. Have a look
little moment to think about what that might mean for you today. And maybe let's turn that thinking into a prayer. And if you agree with what I say, you might want to say Amen at the end, because that's what Amen means. It means I agree. Dear God, thank you for fresh new starts. Thank you for the excitement of turning over a new leaf and what that can mean for us. Please help us to love and care for others and to forgive them when they hurt us, just as you forgive us. Please be with us and keep us all safe, especially at this very difficult time. Amen.